Hi guys, my name is Matsuki, and first of all, happy Halloween, and second of all, happy 20th anniversary to Call of Duty. Shall we begin? I have devised a 20 list questionnaire for you all right here on screen right now. It'll be in the pinned comment below too if you guys want to answer the questions yourselves. Just copy the list and then uh, paste it into your own comment below, and then like so, uh, type your answers right beside it. So like, first Call of Duty, MW3. Yeah, baby, we're done number one. Let's get into number two. Just kidding, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So my first Call of Duty was Modern Warfare 3. All the way back in like, I couldn't even tell you what year. I was probably like 12 or, yeah, I was I was 12 at the time. I played MW3 at my friend's house. His name was Dean. You might've heard of him if you've been on my Twitter. Uh, but that was my very first ever Call of Duty experience. I wanna give you guys some history in this video too. So a lot of these questions are gonna be based around what got you into Call of Duty, your favorite things in Call of Duty and where you like to see Call of Duty in the future. But for me, it all began with Modern Warfare 3 and even Black Ops 2. I, I would say Black Ops 2 is pretty close to Modern Warfare 3 as one of my first Call of Duties. I, I pretty much played them at the same time. Question number two. Favorite nostalgic COD game? Okay. Uh, my favorite nostalgic Call of Duty game is gonna be Modern Warfare 3 as well. I think I made the most memories on that game that have just stuck with me. So when I played Modern Warfare 3 at my friend's house, we'd always play split screen together and we came up with our own mini games to play in Call of Duty. Obviously there were there were no bots in OGMW3, so we couldn't really play online. Like He didn't have online internet connection. I didn't either at the time. I got my online internet connection for gaming and like, 2015 some sometime around there like I got into gaming pretty late I guess you could say <laughs> a lot of a lot of COD players that consider themselves OGs have started when they were children I'm currently 20 years old and I started playing Call of Duty when I was 13 okay <laughs> or even 12 12 I, I got my first Call of Duty myself when I was 13. Modern Warfare 3 was the first Call of Duty I ever bought for myself. The one mini game that we came up with and continued playing is what I'm gonna call Room Defender. It's basically free for all, but you pick a room and you kind of stick in it. You gotta, you gotta fend it off from everyone else. Uh, everyone else who's trying to get into the room, they're working as a team, and you're just a, a solo player in that room trying to defend it yourself. We had like three to four people playing at once, so it, it was, it was hectic but in a really fun way too. Basically imagine a hard point in this uh, one room. It's a, it's a baby crib on Fallen. Love that room. Oh, what memories that brings to me. <laughs> um, only one person can be on that hard point at once. So once you're on it, you're going to be a greedy little bastard. You're going to keep that thing to yourself. Everyone who's outside of that room trying to get up there, they can work together if they want. Uh, they, they can't kill each other though. There is a grace period for those people. But yes, the baby crib on Fallen was a major one that we played played on uh, and used as our little uh, room defending spot. Another one was this uh, other two-story building on, I believe it was Mission, not Village. I'm pretty sure it was Mission. It's the one with the giant crevice and kind of a fallen apart the ruins sort of area. But yeah, this area was pretty fun to defend too. <laughs> a lot of the walls could be shot through, I remember, and uh, the grenade spam in there was, oh, <laughs> it was hectic, dude. Lots of bodies were piled up on those staircases, goddamn. And then lastly, I think we also played a little bit, not as much, but a little bit on outpost in this uh, sort of underground bunker area. It, it was really fun to like uh, snipe from, I guess, from the window, and then also defend the two other entrances leading in to the underground bunker. But we didn't play this map too much because my friends thought it was too big and too hard to learn. <laughs> I, I, on the other hand, uh, when I got MW3, this was the map that I got on and wanted to learn right away. Uh, apparently, from one of my friends, uh, he said that it was as big as like a, basically what I would say is an equivalent to a ground war map in the current Call of Duty games, but of course they didn't exist back then, but that's what it was kind of like described as to me. Yes, there is a huge portion of this outpost map that isn't used, but the rest of the map was just, ah, oh, gorgeous. I loved it. What a good map. But that's enough of nostalgia. Let's get into question number three. My first zombies map. This one for me has got to be Noct Durantoten. Hopefully I said that right, but it's uh, the bunker map basically from Cold War's Die Machine, except it's not expanded like it is in Cold War. It, believe it or not, that is an old map from, I believe, World at War. Back then, you could only stay within the bunker and building windows was the main objective, like to fend off against the zombie horde. <laughs> in Cold War, that's not really the case you just run around the the plane wing you know if you know what cold war is you know where it is you know what i'm talking about it's a good map for grinding zombies but it used to be more about i guess horror and uh using your environment to stay alive back then <laughs> so question number five 
uh, fittingly, this is my favorite zombies game, Black Ops Cold War. Uh, I, I, I think it's my favorite zombies game because of the, the movement and the upgrade system. I think that adds a lot of replayability. The movement itself makes the game really fun. I, I do miss the whole Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare style of zombies movement though. Being able to slide and hop around the map is something that I, I do really dearly miss. Cold War kind of brought that back. I don't know if it's quite as fluid as those older games, but it is, it's still really good, especially with the new newest edition of PhD Slider. You basically slide longer distances in Cold War Zombies now because of it. That just kind of added a, a lot to the movement and made the game really fun for me. I'm not really an Easter egg guy, but uh, Outbreak also was really replayable in that game for me. It was a fresh experience and I liked uh, the vehicles. And just being able to chill out in Zombies was a really good time. I'm really looking forward to uh, the outbreak mode in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Hopefully it's just as good. <laughs> and question number six, what is my favorite Call of Duty multiplayer? Guys, come on, this has got to go to Infinite Warfare. <laughs> this might be the most controversial take I have, but Infinite Warfare is my favorite Call of Duty multiplayer. Maybe it's not controversial because I worded it like favorite, but I, I would say it's the best multiplayer too, but ah, it's, a, it's my favorite because, well, I think the advanced movement era of Call of Duty is severely underrated. It's one of my favorite ways to play Call of Duty. It's got Call of Duty's core mechanics right there. Fast, fluid, arcadey gunplay. Like, what could go wrong? <laughs> and Infinite Warfare, its theme also, it, it held true to its theme for most of its life cycle. It's a game set in space, and your characters are wearing astronaut suits. It's fitting. There's also robots. The year is like, what, 2100 and something, like 65? Like, it's far in the future from now, and well, I would expect to see robots then. Killer robots. <laughs> I was also a really big fan of Black Ops 3. It's just that I choose Infinite Warfare over Black Ops 3 because the, the weapons in, weren't in supply drops only. There were some variants only in supply drops, but uh, the game did have some quartermaster deals which you could use to unlock them. Uh, I don't think they have them now because they used to be on like a cycling thing and I don't know why they stopped cycling through, but you could buy infinite crates to unlock everything. The weapon variants themselves weren't as like OP as Advanced Warfare's either. They were just like little gimmicks for the most part. Some of them did change the weapons, but they were changed more so to be like a new weapon entirely. Entirely, so they were not just getting benefits, they were uh, getting negatives too. The NV4 Flatline, for example, thing had infinite range, but guess what? Everyone forgot about it during Infinite Warfare's life cycle, but apparently people just wanted to hate the game to hate. Because that weapon, it has infinite range, sure, but it also has reduced fire rate, so you're not even gonna kill people at the, at the same speed as normal, unless they're at the longest range in the game, which, by the way, barely exists on those multiplayer maps. The game also has stuff like mission teams it also innovated so 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 damn much with the equipment oh dude don't get me started. <laughs> you can see in the current Modern Warfare 3 that's gonna come out uh, this year that they remade the tar grenade into like this drone that you just like throw forward and it goes straight and explodes on its target, just like the tar nade. It's a little bit different because you don't like charge it up like the tar nade, but there's definite inspiration from there. <laughs> this stims even started on Infinite Warfare. I don't know if I finished saying why I liked it more than Black Ops 3, but uh, I think the movement's more smooth. I think the rigs are also like way more balanced than Black Ops 3's and even Black Ops 4 is like, god damn, Black Ops 4's specialists were just awful, awful to deal with. Way too overpowered. Infinite Warfare is more balanced. They add some new ones in there too. The, the rigs in Infinite Warfare also had some traits, so it's not a total ripoff from Black Ops 3. They had perks built into them, and they also had more abilities per rig as well. You could choose out of three different weapons and abilities, and then also out of three perks. And something nice about the game keeping its theme is that you could actually tell what rig is what rig. <laughs> the created class was still pick 10, which is always fun, and the streak system was kind of reminiscent of advanced warfare streak system they kind of updated it a little bit and you could earn more streaks through grinding out the game you could unlock them just kind of similar to black ops uh, cold war zombies where i value progression there i also valued it in infinite warfare and there were so many ways to progress in infinite warfare that it was just a lovely experience so much fun to be had there and you were rewarded for your time adequately and prestiging but before i just turn this video into an infinite warfare love story <laughs> let's move on to the next question shall we 
Okay, so my favorite Call of Duty campaign has also got to go to Infinite Warfare. Sorry. <laughs> Black Ops 1 is a very, very close contender. If not Infinite Warfare, I would say Black Ops 1. But the reason I would choose Infinite Warfare over Black Ops 1's campaign is probably because of the characters. I love the development you got with Reyes and how he connects with his crew and everyone on board. Even Ethan was a lovable robot. If you haven't tried out Infinite Warfare's campaign, it's an emotional roller coaster. It's so damn good. Black Ops 1 has a really good mystery, but Infinite Warfare just takes the cake. And speaking about Infinite Warfare, number eight, best multiplayer rig, specialist weapon, and ability. Hmm. I decided to separate these uh, next two questions up a little bit. This is the best. My, my next question is my favorite. So, uh, the best, I would definitely say that the best specialist weapon, it would be Black Ops 4's Tempest. <laughs> that thing electrocutes you and it, it's uh, really hard to challenge, I would say. It's got a very short like charge little timer before it shoots its electric beam, but it's not enough to even get a kill. So I would say that one's easily the most overpowered. <laughs> you could be watching a lane, you could see an enemy, you'd shoot him. Anyone else who comes near him, he also gets downed instantly. So I mean, like what? Compare that to Infinite Warfare Synaptic Rig, like the Rewind trait or ability right like it doesn't compare rewind's not gonna kill you sure it'll catch you off guard and sometimes it does lead to your death because then you can just rewind really fast get all their health back and kill you but it gives you at least some time in infinite warfare to react to that and get out of the way but yeah i think synaptics rewind ability would definitely come close but tempest easily takes it objectively it is the strongest <laughs> and number nine my favorite multiplayer rig slash specialist weapon and ability i gotta say infinite warfare ftl he had a phase shift ability it's uh basically puts you into another dimension where you don't take damage you also cannot see other enemies and teammates and you can't hear their footsteps either so when you get out of that new dimension it's like on a timer you get out and you're just in another location on the same map uh sometimes you'll be in the enemy's line of sight sometimes you won't it's kind of a gamble but it just gets you out of a gunfight really nicely without that annoying synaptic rewind ability that just gives you back all your health instantly and resets the engagement all right so number 10 we got my favorite pieces of equipment one tactical and one lethal i'm gonna have to go with black ops cold war stim shots uh specifically the beta versions of them because they recharged in i believe eight seconds and then the full game made them recharge charge in 12 seconds but oh dude the eight second recharge timer it was just it was so clutch it kept a constant action like you did not have to play as slow obviously playing slow is kind of a, a pacing sort of thing but i think the game actually played a lot better when it had an eight second recharge time but maybe that's just me but i really liked it and for lethal like goddamn, that is a hard one i want to say like it, it maybe infinite warfare's little spider grenade because that was kind of like the first grenade I think in COD history that would actually like seek out your target like a like a camper you threw it around a corner it would just crawl around the corner and it would stop near the player and then it would count down on a timer and explode so if you're still sitting there and you don't run away well it's gonna explode and kill you it forced you to run away uh another one that I really liked was Modern Warfare 22's like this year's COD slash last year's COD I don't know whichever it is the drill charge grenade this thing would go through walls which would also kind of basically be an anti-camping device so I I really like that one too. It was very creative and well done. Congrats. Good job, Infinity Ward. Two for two. I don't know which one I'd pick out of those two. Uh, I, I'm... Fuck it. I'll, I'll go with the spider grenade from Infinite Warfare because that thing was just so unique and fun. And there's also like an emote in the game. Uh, if I can find it, I'll show it on screen right now, but it was just like crawl on your hand and you just squish it like a spider that it is, you know? But yeah. <laughs> Next question. Number 11. Your top three guns in Call of Duty history. This has got to go to like a lot of Infinite Warfare weapons. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love it. Infinite, Infinite Warfare so much. <laughs> um, I think for number three, I'm going to pick a nostalgia weapon though. I'm going to pick the PP uh, M1. What was the name again? MW3 PP M1. Oh, it's the PP uh, 90 M1. It's the bison or the bullfrog. Uh, the water gun back in the day that's why i liked using this weapon it just looked like a water gun and i was like fuck it <laughs> it looks so fun <laughs> so th that's gonna be my my third favorite nostalgic weapon i guess you could say uh for the other two though you know what i'm actually not gonna choose a weapon from infinite warfare for my number two spot i'm gonna choose a weapon from bo3 and that is the vmp that thing was one of the most fun feeling weapons i've ever had to play with sure maybe it was a tiny bit op but god that recoil was satisfying and the iron sights too like 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm lost. I'm at a loss for words. And for my number one spot, this is so hard, guys. I'm sorry. Um, it might act not actually be my number one, but I'm gonna have to choose one of the weapon hybrids from Infinite Warfare. If you don't know what a weapon hybrid is, I think they were actually introduced in COD Ghosts. In case you guys want to see this right here on the left, that's the, the Ripper SMG from COD Ghosts. I think it was called the Ripper in that game as well, but they bring it back to Infinite Warfare. It's not going to be my favorite in Infinite Warfare, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. God, this is so hard. The EBR 800, that's a, that's a really fun one. I, I liked that one. The AR mode wasn't very good though. Like, Type 2, that was so fun. I used that as a secondary for so long, just to get like a free, akim free akimbo pistols. I think you might have been able to anyway, but uh, that's the one I, I mainly used at level 1, right? <laughs> Plus it doubled down as an assault rifle too, and the assault rifle was really good. Gosh, am I gonna pick the Type 2? The RVN was a really fun one. That's the one that like you pull it apart into two tasers to shock someone to death, or you put it together and it becomes a, a burst, a two round burst assault rifle. Of course the NV4 was a really good one too. Just for honor honorable mentions, I'm gonna put the NV4 in there too. The gun looked slick. Oh, and the Proteus, uh, I think the Jaeger? The Proteus Jaeger. That's the sniper rifle in the game that transforms into a shotgun. God, I'm gonna have to pick between the Proteus and the Type 2. Ooh. You know what? I'm gonna go with the Proteus because the Type 2, yes, it's a sort of variant was very satisfying to use, but the pistol variant, or not the variant, but the pistol hybrid on it, not as good. Same with like, it had a variant, I remember the Type 2 that transformed the pistols into shotguns, which just also wasn't very good at all. But the Proteus, like, I could use that sniper and the shotgun on that weapon very effectively. So I'm gonna have to go with the Proteus Jaeger as my number one weapon in Call of Duty history. So there you have it. Next question! <laughs> number 12, favorite perks you love to see implemented? Okay, so I wanted to put this question in here because I think everyone has some sort of perk that they just, like, when they see a new Call of Duty, they're like, yes, I need to run that one. And I don't want this to be a clutch perk, guys. Like, choose a unique perk here that you're you're just overjoyed to see for me that would have to probably be uh probably be quick fix i think that's just it was a newly implemented perk i believe in Modern warfare 2019 before then it was kind of a, a weapon variant sort of perk in infinite warfare for that really fast firing smg i think it was the hvr or something like that it was a yellow smg in that game but yeah that perk it allows you to instantly start regenerating health as soon as you get a kill and obviously if you get damage if you get damaged straight after your health regeneration just starts after you get a kill like it won't keep going up i know Modern warfare 3's beta had a problem with that with one of its equipment which is kind of like the quick fix perk but it was called, was it Battle Rage? It might have been Battle Rage in the MW3 beta, but that thing was super OP when it first came out. But yeah, quick fix. I would, I would love to see it back in Call of Duty. Number 13, favorite playstyle of your own in multiplayer specifically. Okay, so if you guys have been following the channel, you probably have seen my Stop Hating on Call of Duty Maps Kunstenaire District Edition video. And in that video, I pointed out on that map specifically a really fun loadout that I love running. Basically, you have a sniper secondary and then you have an SMG or an assault rifle primary. Overkill is my personal favorite playstyle in Call of Duty multiplayer and specifically with a sniper secondary. Uh, the primary, I either run an SMG, AR, or shotgun. That's the way I love to play Call of Duty. It's so satisfying being able to get like a kill with a shotgun and then quickly swapping to your sniper to get another kill. Or, you know, obviously with an SMG, swap to the sniper and get a kill. It, it's just, it's really good. I love it. And on the opposite end of that spectrum, we have least favorite enemy play style in multiplayer. So I, I wanted to see exactly what everyone had to choose for this one. Do you guys hate people that use shotguns and camp in corners, maybe with claymores? Or do you hate the people that sit at the back with snipers? Or perhaps it's rushers, like maybe the, the two sweaty players get to you because your skill-based matchmaking doesn't give you those easy players. So I was really curious to see what you guys have to say for this one in the comments. Uh, I, I think my personal least favorite play style for an enemy player has to go to the the claymore camper i think uh it, it, it's specifically modern warfare 2019 because just claymores in that game were too overpowered you, you couldn't even see where the trajectory of the claymore is sometimes because the lasers they don't go very far off the claymore uh visually but game mechanically they do go farther so you could just run into one without like actually running into the laser and you instantly die there's no avoiding it in m 19 uh, which is really sad too you know because i had so many fixes 
fixes for that game that I would have loved to see, but Infinity Ward didn't really do it back then. One of my fixes was easily just like giving the Claymore a, a timer, allowing you to jump over the explosion. The explosion could have just been like on the ground level, right? And it just goes poof. Out, out sideways, right? Kills you that way. But no, no. Claymores, they... Ugh, God. PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> Claymore campers. I don't even care if they were using a shotgun. Like, shotguns, are, they're OP in their own right in pretty much every Call of Duty. There's always that one shotgun, but Claymores specifically, I hate you if you use Claymores. Fuck you. Fuck you specifically. <laughs> um, anyway, number 15. Favorite campaign and zombies character. All right, so favorite, let's go with Zombies character first because I don't have as much to say there. I would have to go with Richthofen, the German scientist. Really fun guy. I love his personality. Uh, I haven't really been into the zombie lore too much, but from what I've seen on YouTube videos and just like uh, recapping the whole lore, he kind of like starts this whole project uh, going into the zombie verse, I guess. And <laughs> man, I, I love him. His voice acting and his lines, his dialogue are just so good. So that's why he's going to be my favorite zombies character. For campaign though, easily Reyes from Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Sorry. I know. More Infinite Warfare praise. Also, my camera is a little bit high. So let's lower that a little bit. There you go. Reyes, my boy. <sighs> if you haven't played Infinite Warfare's campaign, I'm not going to spoil it. Infinite Warfare is just, it has the best characters I've ever seen in Call of Duty history. It just, the development Reyes goes through in that campaign was lovely. I really felt for that guy at times and it's, it's a very sad campaign and he was such a well done character. I would highly recommend playing it, but moving on to number 16, favorite boots on the ground map. So 16 and 17, I've separated them into favorite boots on the ground map and advanced movement maps. So you guys can actually choose a, a little bit easier. <laughs> uh, it was kind of tough for me personally, because I, I feel like both of those games play a lot differently, like the, the jetpack games and regular boots on the ground games, because jetpacks have more verticality to their maps in general. So for my favorite boots on the ground map, I'm probably going to have to go with either raid or terminal, but I'm going to probably choose raid just because I think it's a little bit more competitive terminal like well i love that map too it's a little bit more relaxed and maybe a tad more a little tad too much sniper friendly i don't know either map i i love seeing them in a call of duty game i just i don't like seeing them remastered per se like the like raid was in cold war i'd rather see a, a new sort of skin put on the map like they did in black ops 3 as a dlc map called uh, empire uh, as you can see here in the background i probably have some gameplay footage of it but the, the, our team went ham on it and it just looks fresh and new uh, and it plays just as well <laughs> advanced movement map that one's got to go to black ops 3's fringe and I think specifically, probably the, the Nightfall version of Fringe. It was just Fringe set at night. Plus, they redesigned the whole map too, so that it takes place, I guess, either before or way after the droughts that happened on that map. Because when this game launched, that map was just a desert. It was dry as a you know what <laughs> and visually too it just didn't look that great it's really sad when you love a map so much but it just doesn't look the best it, that's basically Alarab Air Base from Modern Warfare 2019 as well I just that layout was so fun in that game I, I loved it so much but visually it's just a little bit ugly I, I did I don't like the yellows and oranges on the map same with the fringe but I'm gonna have it here as my number one favorite advanced movement map in Call of Duty. Number 18, okay. What is the objectively best Call of Duty game? Winky face. Okay, so winky face because I'm choosing Infinite Warfare. I'm sorry, I know a lot of you guys won't choose Infinite Warfare, but it's gonna be my... Ob ob <laughs> That's like an oxy... Moxy oxy oxymo oxymoron? What, what the what the fuck is that word? Let me look it up real quick. Oxymoron. Okay, I did pronounce it right. It's oxymoron. <laughs> and it's one word, not two. Good, good, good. All right. Objectively, I'm going to have to go with Infinite Warfare, and I'll have to make a video on that one, so stay tuned. Uh, I'll probably do it when uh, Call of Duty's dry or something, though, um, just so that I'm actually catching up with content that's relevant for you guys. Number 19. Okay. Sorry, guys. I forgot to scroll down on this list. Okay. So, number 19. Oh, damn it. Spoilers for number 20, but number 19. What do you love most about the franchise? So, this this one I wanted to be a nice one. It's COD's 20th anniversary, right? So let's get a little bit positive in the comment section this time, eh? What I love personally most about this franchise is probably the innovation and the leaps that uh, studios take once in a while. I know Infinity War does it a lot. 
but to be fair, Treyarch and Sledgehammer Games also do it. Like Vanguard, in my opinion, multiplayer wise, is a huge step up from Call of Duty World War II's multiplayer. Guns feel like really well designed and the recoil, they like, they, they fixed it. Uh, World War II recoil on weapons just not feel that great. Like, especially for its time, like, eh. But yeah, Sledgehammer Games, they, they picked up their shit. They started implementing new stuff. Like Vanguard's uh, equipment system, actually. that Dude, Vanguard has the perfect equipment system in all of Call of Duty. Like, I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but when that game launched, specifically when that game launched, none of the equipment was overpowered, so they had no need for a trophy system, which was fucking amazing. Equipment in that game, like lethals, they just helped you get kills. Same with tacticals, actually. If you threw a, a stun grenade at someone, guess what? It didn't uh, stun your movement entirely. Stun grenades in Call of Duty, they usually stun you so you can't move like around with your legs, and you also can't move around with uh, your crosshairs. But in uh, Vanguard, it only stun your legs, so you could still like, like you could, you're you're kind of stuck in place, right? But you can still look around like you normally do. So I, I love that change. One, and two, they didn't have a flash grenade. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Three, they didn't have a semtex that like explodes in the air, right? Uh, they had a gammon bomb, which I believe you had to get a direct hit with someone, kind of like a throwing knife, but. It explodes, right? And it also explodes on the ground, of course, too, but I don't think it would kill you if it exploded on the ground unless you were actually already damaged a little bit. So that's enough love for uh, uh, Sledgehammer Games. Let's get on to Treyarch. What have they done in recent years that I have loved? Uh, what they've innovated upon? Um... Hmm. Zombies. Outbreak. Amazing. I loved it so much. It's one of my favorite zombie modes now, and it's partially why I think uh, Black Ops Cold War is one of the best Call of Duties that anyone should just get if you don't- if you're wanting to get into COD. Like, it's a really good Call of Duty. I would highly recommend it. Same with, like, of course, like, other Call of Duties. If you're on PC, like, Black Ops 3 is a good one. Uh, not for multiplayer, but for zombies, like, there's a mod community on there, and they're just making maps 24-7. Like, they're still going hard. <laughs> I think a new one just released. It's like a water park map. And then there's also, a, I think my friend was- my th friend Timmy Panda was wanting me to play I think a World War II map if I remember correctly I'll have to do that sometime soon maybe I'll stream it oh and also in Cold War like the progression system I think I mentioned that earlier in this video but the progression in Cold War zombies was really fun to go through you can go in you can you can extract basically with whatever essence you find in the map or these special gems and you can spend that to upgrade your perks so when you go into the map and you buy let's say I don't know speed cola you could basically like run faster if you've upgraded it so Let's go. I love it. It's it's very fun. And lastly, well, it's been a great time, guys. Happy 20th anniversary. I know that was a few days ago now, but happy 20th anniversary, everybody. Mono over 3 is on the horizon. I can't wait to play that game. But for our last question here, we got where would you like to see COD in one year? five years and 10 years from now. So this, I guess, is a more personal qu uh, question, personalized question. For me, one year from now, I think I would like to see COD implement this cosmetic filter. I know I've mentioned it so many times on this channel, I sound like a broken record, but I think a cosmetic filter needs to be, needs to be implemented if we want to retain Call of Duty's image for the upcoming years, because let's just say we're another five years in the future. How are people gonna look back on these older Call of Duties? Like, a lot of my content revolves around me going back to older Call of Duty games to get footage and visuals of those games to maybe ignite some sort of nostalgia in you, but it's gonna be hella hard to do that when I'm, like, going back to Modern Warfare 2 when you got these Halloween skins still running around. Like, who the fuck cares? That came out at the end of the life cycle, and it doesn't even match the theme at all of the game. So, like, does it scream Modern Warfare 2 to you? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think they've actually killed all of my hype with the Modern Warfare franchise just by including that sort of stuff in, in the game, and Modern Warfare 3 is gonna launch just like this because cosmetics are crossing over to that game from Modern Warfare 2. And who knows, they might even cross over in the future to, like, Black Ops Gulf War. And it's like, okay, I guess with COD HQ, that is a very plausible sort of thing, right? Black Ops Gulf War is probably going to be on the same engine as this game, as this Call of Duty app, as they're putting it. It's not Call of Duty Modern Warfare, no. It's just Call of Duty now. So yeah, like, I would, I would love a cosmetic filter if we want, like, Gulf War, what is that, like, 1990s sort of era. I would love to see the default skins that match that era all the time. I think it's really sad that we don't see that stuff anymore, but five years from now, where do I want to see COD? I want to see a, a jetpack Call of Duty b between now and five years, like, really badly, man. It's been so long, it's almost, dude, it's, oh, it's almost been, like, a decade since, like, Infinite Warfare, and I guess, uh, we did have some jetpack mosh pits in, uh, Black Ops 4's Blackout Battle Royale mode, that was fun and I, I did I think I did I make sure to mention that no I don't I don't know if I mentioned that in my wishlist video for Modern Warfare 3 but I want to see a jetpack game 
Even if it's just the jetpack mode added later on into like say Modern Warfare 3, kind of like how they did it in Blackout, I'd be fine with that. But like above all, I just want to see a jetpack Call of Duty built from the ground up so that we actually have maps built for the advanced movement and built for wall running. Uh, Blackout obviously didn't have wall running, but wall running was a big part of it, especially the map design. And 10 years from now, like, I don't know if I'll be around in 10 years from now. Hopefully I am, but Jesus, that's a long time away. So I don't know. What, what game came out 10 years before this? Call of Duty 20, let's 2013. Call of Duty Ghosts. Oh man. <laughs> so yeah, I, I guess the, the last decade ago, Call of Duty was Call of Duty Ghosts. God, that's a decade old. Ah. <laughs> ah, God. Okay. So Call of Duty Ghosts, compare that to Modern Warfare 2, the current Modern Warfare 2. Like, there's a lot of huge changes done. I think we've regressed in the perk system. Uh, <laughs> that's an obvious one. Art style wise, goddamn, we have gone up so far from Ghosts. Ghosts was just gray and sad and. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, on the other hand, I think it's one of the best looking Call of Duties we've gotten so far. Color scheme wise, gorgeous, graphically, probably better than Modern Warfare 3's graphics because uh, the shadows looked better, the, the maps had more depth to them, as I pointed out in my uh, first impressions video. If you guys are interested, it's on the channel already for the, the Modern Warfare 3 beta. Go check it out. And character customization. I guess Ghosts had that, right? We could customize our helmets, our faces, our bodies, and I think they're... Were there, were there special characters? No. No, I don't think they were. But it had more customization back then than we do now, and I find that a little bit sad too. I think in 10 years, I want to see Call of Duty in a healthier state, uh, especially monetarily. Uh, I don't want to see this anti-consumer garbage in the store any longer. I want to see bundles fully ridden away from Call of Duty, like maybe give a certain little discount for bundles, but let us buy stuff separately like we can on other games like Fortnite. If I want to buy a skin on Fortnite, I don't have to buy that with the glider and the pickaxe for like a total of $30, you know? I don't have to spend like 1200 or 1500 COD points or, sorry, V-Bucks. <laughs> Call of Duty wise, I think you could probably sell gloves for like they're pretty cheap like dude come on like two or three dollars each if they're animated or something like i don't know maybe five and then the rest of the skins like i wouldn't mind ghost recon wildland style customization where you can customize the eyewear and the the mask and the helmet and the headphones all separately uh, and you're all obviously you got your shirt and your your vest and your pants and your pants and your boots and then your ghillie suit like all of that was separate in wildlands it's just it's so sad how modern gaming has gone downhill just to make a quick buck but Yes, for 10 years into the future, I want to see more consumer-friendly business, so there you have it, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to copy my own comment down below that has all the questions, and fill your own answers in in the slots or rips out the questions. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Happy 20th anniversary. Bye-bye. Hi, Natsuki from the future. Also, I'm sorry. I know this video is coming out after Halloween. I hope your Halloween was a good one. And Well, I bought a mask, so thought I'd use it for a video. <laughs> Uh, Merry Almost Christmas. Bye-bye.